It's time for Football at Four with Adam Kaplan. I have real confidence that our football operations uh, can once again create a dominant football team. Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios. It's football at four. It is football at four powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. And we got a lot to get into as the draft is less than a month away. Adam Kaplan, he is one of the hosts of the Inside the Birds podcast. Jeff Mosher, of course, we heard from on Monday and Wednesday. Adam is in on this fine Friday. How are you, my friend? Michael, good to talk to you. Yeah, we are now in the four-week period, as we call it. Uh, and this is where we wrap up pro days. I was just talking to a a West Coast scout uh, for a team who uh, he's got a little bit of work this week and a little bit next week. And he goes, look, then we put our final reports together at the end of next week. Then the following week, uh, they have scouting meetings. So, yeah, we're, we're getting there, Mike. The pro days are just about done a little bit next week. But uh, what's going to happen, though, what's going to happen is they're going to have medical uh, testing. Guys have to go back for the medical recheck. Uh, the recheck. Uh, like Caleb Farley, we'll have to go back to Indianapolis, get his back check. But yeah. overall, uh, we're, we're getting there. We are. Uh, I just want to get your opinion. Have you heard from any executives or insiders who uh, work inside the league who have said how inexact maybe this year's draft is in terms of because there was no combine? Is that something that some of the teams are a little bit concerned about? Well, we're having pro, pro days this year, which is which is key. But you didn't get the medicals done there in Indy. You, you're having done individually where the players live so far. But the NFL teams have to have uh, – they, 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 if anyone's got a, 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 had a surgery, they want to have a follow-up report, uh, especially if you had it. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, obviously, with his, his labrum, his, his left shoulder. And as I mentioned, Farley and others. Those are important. Yeah, look, they're not getting the, – the combine – by the way, I was told that the combine turf is slower than apparently uh, school's turf. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and 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 obviously you saw all the times. It's crazy with the times. Yeah, but I did get that confirmed. I was I actually asked that exact question, and I did get that. Yeah, the feedback I got from two guys was yes. It's not that the combine track is slow. Believe me, it's not. But it it's a little. It's just a little bit slower. And that certainly can make a difference. All right, uh, let's look at the Eagles quarterback situation going forward here. By the way, Jalen Hurts changes number to number one. For those of you yeah. who had a number two Hurts jersey, you need Sorry. a new one. Um, yeah. Let me get your thoughts on where the Eagles stand with Hurts yeah. now after this trade. I mean, is this an indication to you that he's their guy or is 12? Like, you know, if someone's on the board at 12, do they have to think about him? You know, I'm glad you brought that up because when you and I talked last Friday, the news had broken on the, the two trades, one obviously including the Eagles. And most people, reasonable people thought, hey, this is a good situation for Hertz now because they traded back. The top quarterbacks are gone. Well, that may be true. That's I would agree with that assessment. I don't agree that his job is safe as a starter. And I say that because it's not a secret in NFL circles that they've had interest in Deshaun Watson now. We know about the off the field accusations against Watson. That to me would curtail any potential trade for, with any team. But the fact of the matter is, you have to investigate the situation on Watson. If you're any team, if you have interest in him, you have to see what you can find out. Number one. Number two, it, we know he only turns 26 this year. Here's a guy that said he wanted out. Okay, that has not changed. So the question is, if with, with the Wentz trade and, and Hertz was a late second round pick, we had reported uh, l literally right after he was taken on our, I think our, we did like a live stream where we did, Jeff and I did a uh, show afterwards. And we were hearing that <clears throat> their, their thing was on, it was more of a situation where they thought, uh, particularly Jeffrey Lurie, Howie Roseman, and, and Doug Peterson, I was told, uh, was on board with it. They saw some really, really good traits that transferred the next level with Hertz. They thought he'd be a great backup for Wentz for three years. And if he ever had to play uh, for Wentz, based on his injury history, as we know we know it, Mike, that if that tape was good, they could wind up trading him, getting maybe a second-round pick or better. Remember, they flipped A.J. Philly, a former fifth-round pick, for a second-round pick for the Dolphins. Yeah. 
So that that's what was the thinking there. Yeah, we know that they value that backup position and the yep. ability to get offers for them. So, you know, you take us through a little bit of the thought process at the time that they took Hertz last year. Did they see him as the quarterback three years down the road, or did they see him in this position that he's in right now? Okay, let, let, let me go back to that, because let me add to what I, I said uh, just a minute ago. Let's not forget, in June of 2019, the Eagles extended, once his contract, $32 million a year. If you're drafting a quarterback in the second round the, the following year, I know that we all think, and I said this at the time, I was shocked like everyone else. I'm like, who drafts a backup in the second round? But you kind of outlined it, and, and I'll finish it off here. The Eagles do value the backup quarterback position like really nobody else for years. We mentioned is going back like to AJ Feely. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, they don't always get it right with a backup quarterback, but they sure as heck got it right with Nick Foles. Obviously, they never would have won a Super Bowl without Nick Foles. Let's let's face it; it doesn't get any better than that. So you kind of know uh, when you look at the Jalen Hurts situation, you can't have enough quality backups now. He also gave him the, the added dimension, and the quarterback position these days is changing. Team, co- quarterback coaches now, like guys who not only are mobile, who can run. When the pocket breaks down, can you give me three to five plays? If the pocket breaks down, can you run? Can you move? Can, can you get me a first down? The answer is yes. Jalen Hurts did that last season, and that's what his tape showed uh, from Alabama and Oklahoma, and that, to me, gave him the extra value of why they were willing to take him higher than their original draft grade, which set, was not a two, by the way. I don't know if it was a three or four, but it was not a two. Uh, you mentioned Deshaun Watson. Let's uh, kind of, you know, uh, why have these rumors? I mean, it's like it's this is the most bizarre story that I've ever seen <laughs> because you got 18 on one side saying this. you got 20 on the other side. My thought is, how do you have 28 different masseuses? Like, to me, that's a little bit of a red flag. But, I mean, I'm not here to judge until the facts come out. Yep. But that being yep. said, um, why is this why is this persistent? And how are teams kind of dealing with this? Yeah, so I've talked to at least two teams that have interest in them. They both said kind of the same thing. Their concern uh, about the accusations, but they, they are gathering information. They're using their law enforcement sources. Um, one team told me this week that they're eventually going to send some people down to Houston if they feel like they want to continue to pursue this st- uh, the quarterback or getting more information because quite frankly, like this situation, as you're outlining here, so bizarre, you need to, fi- there's gotta be some sort of a comfortability factor. If you're going to acquire him or en- engage in further trade talks, or just, if you haven't called, you call now, whatever your level of interest is because of what's happened, you have to find out what, what's, what's real and what's not. Right. You just, you have to figure that out. It's, it's certainly in my 21 years to come in the national football league. One of the most bizarre situations of a guy, just so you know, his reputation is incredibly charitable, does great work for the community off the field. And when these accusations come out, you're like, why are they happening now? But look, we know you got to take these things seriously. And, you know, Jeffrey Lurie is a guy, Jeff and I talked about that, that we we, we definitely in our our Thursday show, we, we must have talked about this situation for at least 15 minutes. And... I could just tell you that I, I know the way Jeffrey Lurie feels about treating people the right way and how much it means to him. That he's just not going to sign off anything unless this kid's clean. That's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. It won't happen. They won't. They. It, it. We know Jeff and I know they have interest in him or have had interest in him. I don't know that any team could go any further with this. But you've got my, my point of bringing this part up is you've got to check into it, and and that's what what uh, I'm sure the Eagles have either if they haven't done it they're going to do it because you have to. Yeah, You have to see what's real here. Hey, uh, Adam Kaplan's with us. Make sure you check out the Inside the Birds podcast. It dropped uh, yesterday. They have the new one come out on Monday morning at 6 a.m. Uh, a league executive said, all the Eagles are doing is stockpiling picks for next year so they can get weapons for Jalen Hurts or acquire one of the two top overall picks to draft a quarterback. And I would put Philly in the driver's seat for Russell Wilson next year if Seattle moves him. That would have Howie Roseman written all over it. So. <laughs> but, but here's the problem, Mike. I've, I, Jeff and I talk about this on our show. We actually talk about Watson and Wilson. We, we've known for a while that they have interest in Wilson. But the Eagles are kind of like a lot of teams. If a quarterback's disgruntled, a quarterback 
once out, if a team has issue with a quarterback, they're going to make calls or they're going to check into it. Or the, 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 anyone who looks at the Eagles situation, a quarterback around the league knows the Eagles don't know who their starter of the future is. Hertz has only started four games, which is another subject. So yeah, I, I was on record recently uh, saying that Russell Wilson will not sign another extension. He has major issues with Pete Carroll in terms of their offensive play calling and direction. So, yeah, it, it's never going to work out long term. But here's the issue, though, with trading for Russell, Russell Wilson, whether it's now or next year or the year after. You're going to probably have to give up three first round picks. That's been the belief for any or for what now for Watson or Russell Wilson or somebody like that. The problem is by the time Russell, the team would get good again, he's going to be 35 years old. So is it really worth it to give up that kind of compensation? Yeah. You have to ask yourself that. I. We all know that they were in love with Wilson in, in, in 2012. Roseman said that in his, uh, he's talked about it. He's been on the record talking about that, how much they wanted Russell Wilson. They talked, and, and how he talked about uh, the, the traits that he, <clears throat> that he saw in Hurts and the Eagles did. So, yeah, look, any quarterback that's available, not named Sam Darnold, not named Jimmy Garoppolo, I would expect them to be do, doing some uh, information gathering on. All right, uh, we're four weeks out here. Let's kind of reset the Eagles' needs at 12. Oh, as God. Different this could from, take an hour, Mike. Well, are they, are, is the thinking at 12 different from six, or do they make the move to 12 because of all the quarterbacks in play here? They think they could get a guy at 12 that maybe they liked at six. Well, I, I, here's what I, I, you know, I've done a little bit of a mock draft just from talking to personal people that I'm close to. What I, what they gave me is kind of the, 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 the number range in the first round they're going to go. We, we know that four quarterbacks are going to go in the upper half, Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, and Mac Jones. It would really help the Eagles if Mac Jones goes in front of them. Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddell almost certainly will go. Well, we know what Chase will. I strongly believe Waddell will go off the board before the Eagles pick at 12. Devontae Smith, he could be there. Kyle Pitts will not make it to the Eagles at 12. Penny Sewell will not make it to the Eagles at 12. J.C. Horn, who guys I trust around the league think is the best corner for this draft, it's going to be very close, Mike. Joe Horn's son, by the way, where they makes it to number 12. Patrick Sertain, the second. I think he's going to go in the back of the top 10. He could be there at 12. Caleb Farley will be there. In fact, Caleb Farley might drop out of the first round. He's had multiple uh, back uh, procedures. He had one in January, one recently. That could knock him out of the first round. Now, he's a top three corner. So one of these, now, Rashawn Slater's another one from Northwestern who's terrific, who's a guard right tackle. He could go seven or eight, or he could go as late as 16. He probably will be there for the Eagles. So there's going to be a good football player for the Eagles. So, so Mike, I get why Roseman traded down, getting that, that extra first-round pick. Yeah. He's going to get a player that he wants at 12, one of these guys that I mentioned. Yeah, and, and you know, obviously to uh, move down the six spots, they get the pick next year that gives them potentially three picks in that spot there. So you just laid those guys out. Uh, you mentioned, you know, the fact that um, the needs and stuff. Let me ask you this about uh, – Well, actually, we didn't go over all the needs. I got – Mike, I got <laughs> – Oh, I mean, wow. We could hit the need board. Yeah, I, I have a needs board for every NFL team. It's kind of how I gather my information. The Eagles' needs are – the major needs, okay, the major needs would be a true X receiver. That's where Travis Fulgham plays. They, they just need someone I think has got a little bit more upside, more explosive, but he's pretty good, but more dependable. Uh, they need three outside corners. Mosher and I have talked about this. They have one guy they can line up with now with Darius Slay. They don't have anyone outside or well, the other side opposite him. And remember, Slate turns 30. They need someone to eventually replace him. You should you should never wait till it's too late. You figure he'll be around for this season and one more. Uh, they need linebackers like, like crazy. No, they're not taking Parsons. That's not going to happen. But because uh, I, I heard your show this week, it ain't happening. I could I could guarantee you that. Um, plus, he's got the off the field concerns, which um, they're there. It's not a secret. Yep. I mean, if you've done any homework on him, but he's very gifted, very explosive. So I would say I would if, if we reset offense to defense, they're going to draft the developmental quarter. They should if they keep their 11 draft picks or 10. They need a number two running back with size, an X receiver. After they trade Zach Ertz, I do believe it'll still happen by the draft or during the draft. They're going to need another tight end, a develop, two developmental offensive linemen, a center and a guard, one to two D tackles, one to two DNs, two to three linebackers, a safety three outside corners. Well, you can't get all these things done in the draft. So the question is, 
how many of them could they get done? Yeah, that's the issue. Hey, let me ask you this: This is a little outside the box, maybe, but if they make a were to make a trade on draft day, do you think that there would be a a pl- like a position that they would rather trade for over drafting? Probably. I mean, not knowing this team, but they move so many. They have so many draft picks, eleven, and they made so many trades. Like last year, they got a guy like Goodwin. You know, would they re- would say, "Look, let's just bring in a veteran corner or a linebacker"? Yeah. Yeah, so so let's say on my needs board there are 14 players they need. They probably by the time training camp starts, you know, again, we don't they're they're tight against the cap. I I still think they're gonna add one to two players from free agency. I'd reported earlier this week that uh maybe interest in TJ Carey, the former Colts and Raiders and Browns corner, could also play safety. Yeah, you're probably right. They need to add a veteran corner, but they still need two developmental corners. Yeah, they, by by late July. Or by their June mandatory camp, we, we we with the news that came out this week that uh, the NFL sent out a memo to teams about um, they're feeling a little bit better about the COVID issue in terms of their their, their handle on it, obviously, which was, they did a good job with it. Um, the rules might be re- relaxed a little bit. Maybe by June, though, the players will get on the field. Well, by then you're going to want to get some veterans in there. I think by training camps in late July, they'll have signed three to four veterans for from both sides of the football, obviously. Right, yeah. Somebody actually had texted in earlier to ask Adam if uh, there was any free agents that they're still, you know, kicking the tires on. Yeah, just on. carries the only one I know I'm aware of right now. I think I saw somebody today tweet that they are right around six and a half million under the cap. Does that number sound about right? Um, here's the problem. A, unless it's come from the team, you're not going to get exactly right. Number two, um, I believe it's between four and six million. Number three, you need anywhere from four to six million to sign your rookies. Uh, now, because they have so many draft picks, they will have a bigger rookie pool. But now, if they trade a bunch of these guys away, these picks away, who knows? Mike, yeah. they have such tremendous flexibility now with that trade down. Remember, they moved from the fifth round to the fourth round from the pick exchange. They got the extra first round pick next year. And one thing I didn't mention is, who says they won't trade up from 12 to wherever? If, if I don't see Kyle Pitts getting past six, but let's say he got to eight or nine. Who knows? Well, that's a good point. You know, Mosher brought this up about don't rule out them moving from 12 back up and jumping over yeah. Dallas or something like that. Yeah, that's what I mean. You yeah. get with this flexibility with all these picks, with four picks in the first 84, they've got flexibility. They, they've got, uh, they, and and their cap situation, which is, obviously bad this season they're taking so much dead money uh cap hits this year unless unless a bunch of these veterans are traded next year or they they're cut their cap situation is going to be much better the cap will go up next year and, and by the way in 23 the cap is going to be enormous that's the projections from cap people i spoke with yeah i mean if they uh hit these picks this could be a quick little turnaround here you get those three picks next year but that's, that's you gotta hit the picks i mean they're not going to keep 11. Uh, Mosher and I talked about it. We just don't think they will. Now, could he keep nine? We'll see. Mm-hmm. By the way, they, need, Mike, they have so many needs. They were 4 11 and 1 last season. Now they don't know who the quarterback is for the future. Might be Hurts, may not be Hurts. They don't know. Uh, by the way, Dave Zangaro tweeted out earlier the uh, NFLPA figures 6.4 available in cap space after all of the restructures and free agents. By the way, just so you know, the NFLPA rarely their numbers rarely agree with teams. Okay, they're generally a little bit off. I I used to keep religious track of that stuff, talking to teams. I ask them what they have, and I look what the PA had, and they're rarely the same. It's just weird. They're, but they're not like 10 million off. They're usually a couple million off. But six million again. They're still. They're still not going to be able to do much unless right. they tra- cut a player, restructure. I don't know who else they could restructure, or they traded a player. That's kind of where they're at. All right, football of four, draft four weeks away. Eagles at 12. Adam Kaplan, Jeff Mosher will have a new fresh inside the birds the Monday, bird, morning Monday morning at 6. At and, of course, he, like all guests, appeared all via the Boardwalk Honda hotline. All right, Adam, have a good weekend, man. You too. Thank you. All right, there he goes. It's, uh, of course, football at four. Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast and, of course, here on the Sports Bash.